regarding the, um, so I'm pretty sure it's going to be a question soon, and regarding um, Malabé. Yesterday, the Prime Minister and myself met with the directors of some resorts, namely Miguel Alexander and Juamali Martis. They have been appointed by the shareholder of the Sun Resorts to solve the current problems of Sun Resorts, and in particular to realize the sale of Mullah Bay property. I would like to also make it clear that Mullah Bay itself is it's in the hands of a private entity, so the land is obviously in the hands of um, the entity I just mentioned. Um, in the request for the offers to purchase, Sun Resorts is offering for a sale of a piece of land of about 11,000 square meters. The main reason for the sale of the parcel is to raise funds to finance the operations of some resorts on Malibé to pay off huge debts such as taxes, social premiums, insurances, consultants, utility <coughs> bills, etc., which have not been paid by the former management of the Sun Resorts. And last but definitely not least, to have the necessary funds available in order to carry out the process of the sale of Malibé property in a professional and transparent manner. In addition, in the offer request, it mentions that the submissions of offers explicitly and irrevocably reserves the right to cancel their process at any point of time and or to not consider any specific offers made for any reason and for no reasons at all. So that, that was also mentioned in the document. Um, we've also discussed yesterday with the entity that uh, that St. Martin will continue, continue to be informed of any um, sales, any, anything regarding the, the land, per, the, the sale of Malibé or things to do with Malibé. Yes, we do know that it is a private um, entity and also private property, but at the end of the day, St. Martin has been disadvantaged since 1995, um, and we as a government also you need buy in the support of the government also to be able to execute such a project. So we've again asked to continue to be informed in any plans, any processes going forward, and they have they have committed to doing so. Outselling Enya. Is that a... Well, Enya has other profitable uh, entities within the well, whole group of companies. There's some other huge company come in and take it over and that way. Again, it's a matter of evaluation and then the question is what does that solve? Because when you sell uh, the company, mm -hmm. these are companies that are spread out through the Antilles, Kirsha, Ruba, St. Martin, with a different ownership structure, it eventually all comes to the, the, the one uh, big owner himself. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and then that is his uh, legal battle that they're selling off his jewels in his company. They already sold uh, Bank of the Caribbean. No amount has been mentioned. They keep it a secret. Uh, well, at least it's a local Kerosolanian that did it. So. Well, uh, that's a <laughs> good thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, they bought it in but other words. No you know what I mean? amount has been given, so we don't know. But mm -hmm. apparently it's not enough uh, to cover the uh, fiscal, uh, the financial liabilities. Mm -hmm. So. You know, the, the question is when you start selling up all these uh, jewels, you end up with then the, the one entity that has all the problems, because that one, nobody going to buy that one. Yeah, okay. You know, so yeah, this, yeah. Is the, this is the essence of the problem. And then the question is, when you sell up all these entities, is the revenue enough to cover the debts of any life insurance? Again, if that's not the case, then, you know, where are we going? Yeah. You know, so that is why, you know, they're looking for government to solve uh, that problem. Uh, but I've always said, you know, it shouldn't be government, because when you get, put these problems in the hands of government, ultimately, who is the one paying? The taxpayers. The people, yeah. You yeah. and I, we yeah. are the ones that end up paying uh, and footing this uh, bill. You know, we have a central bank that had a legal obligation to oversee. Obligation, thank you. Oversee this entity. They dropped the ball. No matter how you twist and turn it, the ball was dropped in their court. And they didn't uh, do anything with it. So it's up to them to solve that problem. It's a private uh, institution. Two separate private entities, let them solve their own problems. Uh, and if in worst case scenario, if the people's lives or people's financial uh, uh, lives are at stake, 
that is then say, okay, then government can step in and, and, and do the, the honorable thing and save uh, God, uh, those people. But at the end, there is a commercial entity. When they were making profits, uh, Valerie, did we get a cut out of that uh, profit? No. Oh, when they were shipping out the hundred millions of dollars uh, to the U.S. to Ansar, did we get a little cut out of that? No. Thank you. <laughs> Not me then. Maybe others did. <laughs> We didn't. <laughs> we didn't. Uh, we didn't so see, why do we I have to foot the bill? We didn't see a striver, okay? Thank you. Nothing said that. We have nothing. Uh, 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 what do you call it? In, uh, oh, a red set, in, okay? In, in, what do you call it? Uh, uh, Rags darling in, in Papamento. Uh, dipsy? Dipsy. dipsy. <laughs> you <were> dipsy. <laughs> Not a red set, as uh, our uh, grandparents so, uh, would say. But this has all been in the, the discussion when it comes to these situations. Why do the taxpayers have to bail out? private entities, when they were making the profits, uh, the taxpayers wasn't yeah, profiting yeah, from that, so exactly. why does the ta ta taxpayer have to pay for these liabilities? Uh, you know, at the end of the day, you know, in our capitalistic system, it's not fair where yeah. that is concerned. Yeah. Uh, so they have to find out a different uh, solution for these uh, start problems. Change, uh, start changing some laws around here. Uh, uh, well, that's another discussion again. Uh, Change the laws. Uh, who will have to change those laws, uh, Valerie? Not doing them. It's not okay being then. done. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you know, they, they, they all come with this term, you know, too big to fail. Yeah. 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 But hey, uh, when it was too big to profit, uh, we weren't profiting uh, from it. Uh, so why but should we pay for their failure but now? When uh? it's failing now, who's going to mm -hmm. exactly? Mm -hmm. We are stuck in the middle yeah. of it. Okay. So, so we to have recap no the situation, I, I I believe that this is a testing of the market uh, by putting up this uh, small plot of land uh, of Malabi for sale. It's to test uh, the market. Uh, SFV insured? Do you have a valid medical insurance status? SFV is cardless. Request your My SFV account today and enter the virtual office of SFV. Go to SFV.SX and sign up now. SFV, yeah. your social health insurance. During the hurricane season, a potential tropical cyclone can produce rainfall that can cause flash flooding and rock falls. Stay away from flood-prone areas during heavy rainfall, such as Jump Up Casino on Emil Plain Road in Phillipsburg, AT Illich Road Roundabout, LB Scott Road from Emilio Wilson Park until Cake House Supermarket, Zaker's Gut from Petro Plus Gas Station until the Seventh Day Adventist Church, Welkalakan Road K Hill from Welkalakan Road Roundabout until the One Tete Loke Roundabout, Beacon Hill Road from Sunset Bar and Grill until the beginning of White Sands Road, and Rhine Road, also known as Mullet Bay Road, after Sonesto Maho Beach Hotel to the entrance of Cooper Coy from the intersection of the University Drive until the intersection of Rio Grande. For more information on how you can keep yourself and your family safe this hurricane season, visit stmartingulforward forward slash hurricane. This public service announcement is brought to you by the government of St. Martin.
Minister, uh, early this year, uh, Minister Doran and the governor received a proposal from 75 world-renowned uh, animal protection organizations, monkey sanctuaries, and uh, primatologists who offered to bring solutions for the problem with monkeys on St. Martin. At uh, their expense, there would be no cost for uh, the government of St. Martin. Um, was this proposal ever considered, um, seeing that uh, at the moment hundreds of thousands of dollars are spent on the killing uh, of um, monkeys and it gains a lot of bad press in internationally? Any decision as it regards to that is taken with the, necessarily, the necessary input and advice of the NGOs that government deals with. So whether it's the Nature Foundation, Pride, Epic, and the rest, I'm not sure. I don't want to call names that aren't part of it. So if I mention one that isn't it, I know for sure Nature Foundation. Um, and even the last week's session, as I mentioned before, the discussion on invasive species um, was mentioned. And so it's a challenge um, around the world, even within the Caribbean area. So it is something that is seriously looked at and evaluated from all angles. At the end of the day, um, the challenges that are being faced with the invasive species are to human life and food security as well. So they're destroying crops as well as posing a threat and a harm to human life. So and that is being weighed along with whatever is happening. I will check into the petition that was sent uh, to His Excellency the Governor and further discuss with the Ministry of Rami the way forward. Uh, is it possible that we get an update on that research that was done that refutes that of the Nature Foundation as a government? But in addition to that, um, I don't know what research was done in that regard, but I know for sure that the uh, people on the ground, the people that are actually in agriculture, the people that have been and have to live through the monkey devastation on the island, um, they don't need any person from overseas to come and tell them that what they're experiencing isn't real. Um, you could go and ask Mr. Justin Richardson, Denisia White, and others, right? Their crops, their mangoes, they, I mean, even um, Ms. Shaw here has her own garden, suffers through um, the, the issues with the monkeys. And at the end of the day, as Prime Minister mentioned, it's an invasive species, right? Just like how we have, I believe, 1% of our, of our um, Antilian iguana left. Uh, just again in Aruba, there's there that boa constrictors are not native to Aruba, so they have they have like a culling season. And in, in the U.S., they have the same issues with with alligators and other and other species, right? Um, at the end of the day, I stand for our our people that can't make their regular living anymore, can't continue to produce their crops because nothing is being done in in a sense of uh, at, at the very least um, stopping the producing of the, the monkeys. And it might look cute, right, for persons that have to come in to visit on vacation, right, but it isn't for the person that have to live here. So um, you can send information, but I personally stand with our agriculturists. I stand with all persons that have to live here and suffer through, um, our residents even, with their regular gardens that have complaints every day, right, because they don't find it cute. The local housing plan of the Collectivité de Saint-Martin is a regulatory document which will set the housing strategy of the Collectivité for the next six years in order to meet the current and future housing needs in Saint-Martin. The program is focused on two phases. The first phase is a diagnostics phase and the second is a phase of definition of strategic orientation. Basically, uh, what we are achieving, what we are looking to achieve is to come up with a policy for a local housing plan. In French, we call it the PLS. And, you know, we have had the competency for housing since uh, 2012. It has not been acted on, and this monitor has decided to address the housing issue. It's a very serious issue for us, and therefore, with any kind of procedure, the first thing you want to do is you want to do an analysis, and then you want to come up with a strategic plan, and then you want to be able to execute. And so therefore, we started uh, the process in September 2022, where we did uh, analysis of the housing situation on the island, and we have um, um, 
taken a consultant uh, company to do the job. And today, this week, they are in the process of presenting in addition to um, having uh, the input of the various elected officials and stakeholders of this country, we are in the process of coming up with the strategic plan for housing. The Collectivité de Saint-Martin and its delegation Solidarité Santé et Famille have developed an activity for the elderly on the northern side of the island called Semaine Bleu. Semaine Bleu began on Thursday, October 5th and ended last Wednesday, October 11th with a walk called Marche Bleu around the Telbert Carty Stadium and French Quarter. The President of the Territorial Council along with his fourth vice president and the president of the board of directors of the Bethany Home, as well as the secretary general of the prefecture de Saint-Barthélemy et Saint-Martin, opened the day which took place in the garden of the collectivity. A dozen associations and social organizations also participated in the event. Celebrating Senior Citizens Week, and I'm happy, very much happy and delighted to be part of this event because it's an opportunity that is given to us to celebrate, to show appreciation, to show much compassion and much love for the senior citizens of our community because they have done so much in their, in their time to, to strengthen this society, to take good care of our children and to make valuable contribution to the advancement of the St. Martin society. So therefore, we have that res moral responsibility to not to look down on them, on them, but to lift them up in a way that they would, they would be able to sense that there's love and that there's care and compassion towards them. So I am pleased and thankful to all those who have made a contribution towards the organization of this event but who on the clock are taking care of the senior citizens of this country. Like I said, we owe it to them because they have contributed. And they are so much reliable in the household because they take care of, our, of their grandchildren, they shop for them, those who have the means. But they just, uh, how shall I say, give them so much love to the younger, uh, to the younger children and our, our grandchildren. So for that, I am extremely grateful for them and for their contribution. So I'm here as President of the Republic of the country, St. Martin, expressing my solidarity with the senior citizens and reminding, of, and reminding them of our unconditional love as the President of the country. Thank you so much. SHV insured? Do you have a valid medical insurance status? SHV is cardless. Request your My SHV account today and enter the virtual office of SHV. Go to SHV.SX and sign up now. SHV, yeah. your social health insurance is. It's hurricane season. Are you prepared? Here are a few tips to keep in mind to help keep you and your family safe. The Atlantic hurricane season runs from June 1st to November 30th, with the peak occurring between mid-August and late October. This hurricane season, be sure to put together a go bag. A disaster supply kit including a flashlight, batteries, cash, first aid and supplies, medications and copies of your critical information if you need to evacuate. This public service announcement was brought to you by the government of St. Martin.
So it seems that Israeli airstrikes have intensified after President Biden left Israel. Uh, things slowed down while he was on the ground in Israel. Uh, they have uh, resumed now. Uh, people in Gaza are still waiting for the aid shipments. There was an agreement brokered by the president to allow uh, 20 trucks to come in with supplies. Uh, so far, they are still on the Egyptian side. And, and people we speak to in Gaza describe a, a terrible humanitarian crisis. They say the biggest thing they need is fuel. That a gallon of gas uh, on the on the market can cost thirty five dollars. Uh, this was a poor region to begin with. So uh, people say without gas they can't get in their cars. They can't leave the north to go to the south, uh, which is something that Israel has instructed Palestinians to do. And the few independent journalists you talked about the media, the few independent journalists. There are uh, some reporters who work for NBC News and other organizations that are in there trying to verify information are soon not going to be able to have fuel for their generators in order to get out uh, to charge their phones and get pictures and images out. Uh, so it is, a, it is an increasingly difficult situation, and we will see if that, if that convoy comes in. But uh, we are also told from sources in Egypt that the convoy does not include fuel. It includes uh, mostly medical supplies and some water. Uh, and water is another main problem because uh, right now people are drinking well water, uh, which is for agriculture, not, uh, not human consumption. Well, I think uh, that Hamas and Israel are at war, and I think this is going to escalate into a uh, more significant conflict over the next several hours, over the next several days. Uh, this is unprecedented, as Raf was saying. We've seen violence from uh, the Palestinians. We've seen attacks from Gaza uh, into Israel, but not this scale, where you're having potentially dozens of militants flying in on hang gliders and coming in by the sea and, and crossing in by land, uh, presumably by, by tunnels or holes in the, in the border fence. Uh, and the fact that they are still engaged in running battles in multiple locations in southern Israel uh, is something that will uh, be shocking to the Isra Israeli people. Uh, I know that several of the, uh, the airports and uh, transit points into Israel are already uh, facing delays or cancellations. The, the, the country is, is on alert. Uh, Israel said that it is now on war footing. Uh, we've heard from Hamas. Uh, they have acknowledged uh, this operation. There have been some uh, videos that have come out as well showing gunmen dressed in black uh, preparing for this commando-style raid. Uh, and they say that it is retaliation for Israeli actions in Jerusalem, uh, for Israeli actions around the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound. So we've seen this tension. This is an old tension where uh, you, there's buildup of tension and the Palestinians will launch uh, an attack uh, in order to, uh, to to punish the Israelis from their perspective for, for excesses and, and atrocities. But we haven't seen something like this. This level of sophistication and to catch the Israelis off guard and then to keep this operation moving for, 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 for hours now. This began at dawn. Uh, it is already afternoon uh, in Israel. So this has been going on for, for multiple hours now. Uh, we, we I think it's very likely that we're going to see an escalation in some sort of small-scale uh, war, uh, uh, maybe a bigger-scale war, between uh, Hamas and, and Israel. And I think we're, we're in the early phases of that right now. Richard, talk to us about that surprise factor. You know, Israelis have some of the best military intelligence anywhere. How does something like this happen? Well, they don't have a lot of visibility inside Gaza. Now, Gaza itself, they have lots of intelligence. But clearly it wasn't as good. But Gaza is a place that is run by the Palestinians. We're talking about an area that is more or less closed off. It's often compared to the biggest prison in the world. We're talking just over 2 million people that live there, uh, Gaza City being the, the, the biggest population center, very hence, uh, densely populated. And the Israelis, they have informants, they have intelligence, but they don't live there. They don't patrol there. There are no Israeli settlers there. This is an area that is locked off that is run by Hamas, and the Israelis would prefer to forget about the place and not have anything to do with it. But uh, what happened is, is Hamas is in charge. Hamas is, is very militant, very organized. They've been looking for the leader of Hamas, Mohammed Daif, for years. Uh, he's the one who personally announced this operation. So this, from, from Hamas's point of view, is, it, is an enormous coup uh, of, uh, to carry out a sophisticated surprise attack like this. Israeli officials have said, Hamas made a huge mistake because it's going to bring an enormous reprisal. 